Sarah had been trying to write a book for ages, but she was still mm -hmm. on page one. Until she yeah. discovered speakyourownbook.com. Sarah teamed up with one of our trained writing coaches who listened to Sarah's book idea, asked the right questions, and guided Sarah every step of the way. In 90 minutes, they had written the outline for Sarah's entire book. Within weeks, using the speak writing method, Sarah became a published author, both online and in print. Mm. Whether it's a textbook, an autobiography, a novel, or a children's book, speakyourownbook.com can help. Yeah! Visit our website today to download our free 50 question guide and schedule your free consultation. With Speak Writing, anyone can publish a book. Speak your own book today. You speak, we write. You're watching Speak Your Own Book, the TV show on Pagan World TV. Please welcome your host, Chris Copeland, head writing coach and co-founder of Speak Your Own Book. This is the Speak Your Own Book TV show. My name is Chris Copeland. I am your host, and I am also a head writing coach at Speak Your Own Book. And today I have with me Reverend Stephanie Neal, the first priestess of the Corellian tradition. Reverend Stephanie, thank you for joining us today on our, our television program. Well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on because I, I really want to talk about the, the books that not only we helped you create, but also some other books that you have going on uh, in coming out. And I'm really excited to learn more about that. Um, but first off, I, I know the most recent ones that we've worked on that are already published or about to be published, the Corellian Shaman book and your World Workers book. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, what you did with the... Uh... Is it okay if I show the book or is that Absolutely. not? Absolutely, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Finding Your Way Through Nature, which is the Krillian Shaman. And what you did that with really with both the books, you uh, you took all the teachings I did on YouTube, transcribed them, and then edited everything and just to make the formatting nice and pretty. And so I certainly appreciated that. And then you did the same with um, the next evolutionary leap uh, through meditation. And this is uh, essentially the World Walkers order uh, teachings and same deal. You transcribed and then you formatted it, made it look nice, edited it and all that uh, wonderful stuff. So and I really appreciate that. You did a wonderful job. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and it wasn't, I want to uh, assure you, it definitely wasn't just me. We had a whole team of uh, transcribers and editors working on it. And really uh, the, the biggest amount of work goes to them. I do a lot of coaching and working with them in guidance, um, but they put in uh, a lot of effort on it and they had so much fun and they learned so much. That's what um, I, I kind of want to share with our audience. Uh, you know, when you work with us on, on your books, the cool thing is that your message immediately spreads through like half of Nairobi, Kenya overnight. So, you know, and they're talking with their friends about it the next day and this cool project they've got going on. So yeah, um, I, the, the, the Corellian authors that we've worked with already have a ton of fans in Kenya. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so well, tell me, tell us about a little bit about each of your books. Let's start with The Shaman. And you, you said that okay. that was... That was about um, the Corellian Shaman Path, and you had a course over this. We transcribed it for you. What can people learn when they start digging into the material? Uh, essentially, they're going to take a nine-month initiation through experiencing with their own hands and their own eyes and their own skin, uh, walking through different assignments that we give them. So essentially, it's a nine-month quest and as they're going through, maybe they're making a drum or they're finding uh, nine stones that can be lighted by fire without exploding. Uh, so each thing is their own journey. Uh, even just finding the stones is a whole journey on to itself. And as they're finding their stones, they also discover lots of other things as, a walk, as they're walking through a field or walking through uh, a beach or, or a forest. And so basically it's, it's hands-on. It's definitely uh, helping the person to attune to their journey 
their mission, recognizing that they're not the messenger, but in fact, they are the message. And by learning that, uh, they become more empowered uh, by their, their own sovereignty to see, wow, I, I, I learned this through my own firsthand experience. And so it's a, it's a journey. And we have uh, one person that, that leads this class or training uh, in English and then another one in Spanish. And we, we this person, uh, along with guides, help them along. If they have any questions or they, anything they want to share that walks them along for the whole nine months. And then at the end, they have this beautiful initiation. And uh, it uh, the, it's a very uh, lovely way to find out about yourself. Now you think you're finding out about your spirit animals and the spirits of the land and you're finding out about all kinds of things. But meanwhile, you're finding out you, about you. <laughs> Uh, through them, through them. So that's a a super uh, short synopsis of a a beautiful long quest that Krillians can can take uh, through the Krillian tradition. Even though you don't have to be Krillian to to take this. And of course, uh, it, if you buy the book through Amazon, then you you just have to just uh, go to uh, even the Krillian tradition to find out if, in fact, you want to go through a with a guide for the nine months. But then you already have everything there. Now, I didn't put everything. I didn't put all all the assignments uh, because I, I just want because that's too personal. I didn't want to go through all of that. I wanted it so if a, a person wanted to join the training, they have lots of wonderful things that will be uh, uh, presented to them uh, with the guide and it's not in the book. But I hint around and I do cover things that a person can still fe feel satisfied uh, with the process if you decide, no, I I'm just going to read the book. Okay, well, fine. Absolutely. And I like that you give them that option that they don't have to necessarily jump in with a guide right away. They can take your book, look through it, see if it works for them, and then decide to go through the full course with the guide later on. Yeah. Uh, so when you, um, you, you, you say this phrase, Corellian shaman, and I've heard lots of different definitions for what a shaman can be. be in your own words what what do you believe a, a shaman and a, specifically a Corellian shaman is and believes and does uh essentially a uh, Corellian shaman everything is based on uh and doesn't go outside the teachings of the uh, Corellian tradition or, or at least doesn't disagree or that they don't disagree with the tradition, because then that would be a little awkward by teaching something the opposite that the tradition teaches. Uh, uh, and th that's yet a, like another, another teaching, teaching that goes on once a month too, that we purposely, um, the, the three uh, three of us, uh, Lord Don, myself, and uh, Lord Ed will in fact approach a subject, subject. making, making sure, sure we, we don't share what we're going to teach. We just throw out one subject and we hope everyone's different. We want to show that everyone can approach a subject completely different, completely disagreeing, and yet in, in the end, we we all respect each other, and we all it all works out in the end is to show that it, it does not have to be one way, one approach. Uh, so, what was the question again? <laughs> I know that that wasn't the question, but. It got around to the to like a definition. Oh yeah, definition. Uh, but but essentially, a, a shaman is a a person that or, is open. you know what a Corellians actually believe and how broad our belief system is. Exactly, exactly. How broad and uh, to narrow it down uh, is uh, learning about 
how we operate on this planet and that we're not separate from or apart from any being, be it a mountain or a tree, and recognizing that, that that tree or that mountain is also our companion and teacher, and that we are not the only teachers on this planet, and we receiving and respecting and being open to everything on uh, Mama Gaia. Uh, and then when we have that true respect of everything on this planet, then that's when we really start kicking in and learning uh, more, uh, more, even more than we already know, but even more through um, all these other things that have been placed here uh, on this planet. Actually, was just speaking last week with uh, on the show with uh, uh, Shinka Skane, uh, who is the um, head druid for the uh, Black Mountain Druidry, and uh, the 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 very similar broad ethics. ideals that we share uh, across all pagan traditions in Inji. Um, you know that core ethics of what you can, but just to be a good human being. And that's what I love about um, the, when I read through your books, when I read through Reverend Don, Reverend Don's books and, and other books uh, written by members of the Corellian tradition, it's uh, so impactful as far as Stephanie, I think I may have lost you. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Did uh, and I, I I don't think I heard uh, your response. Um, did Did you hear what I said? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, you you broke up uh, for like a few minutes there, so maybe I didn't respond. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I was basically uh, just saying that you know the core tra uh, values of the Corellian tradition are really just good human ethics, um, you know, just being good people to each other, to earth. To, to our tradition and, our, and the, being good to ourselves. As, um, and that's what really, really drew me to paganism. Um, how would you say you started out with, with paganism? Were you born into it or did you come into it later in life? Uh, when I was 12 years old, uh, I would usually stop by when I would walk home from school uh, in a uh, outdoor bar uh, because there was an outdoor bar in Waikiki, Hawaii. And uh, I met two women. They would refer to themselves as root women. And they began to teach me things about the water, about meditation. Uh, just a uh, very, very simple, but yet very profound. And most of the teachings was that they would have me go through an experience and then I would have to come back to them and tell them what I was taught. In the beginning, I thought that was backwards. Like, aren't you supposed to be teaching me? Uh, aren't you supposed to be interpreting what I just experienced? And, and no, you're supposed to come back and you tell us. And I said, well, all right, all right. So I did that until I was 18. So from 12 to 18, I stopped by that same bar. And uh, no, I, I didn't drink. Uh, I did pretend like I drank because I would always get a rum and Coke, but it was not a rum and Coke. It was just a Coke. Uh, but a Shirley it's, Temple. It's, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, and then they initiated me as a, a sea priestess. And then at that point, they said, when I am at the, the end of my life or the last 
part of my life, I will then fully uh, set up and train sea priestesses throughout the world. And then it, it, and it kind of happened that way because then uh, I'm, I'm jumping to a, like a, a bunch of years, but then by, by the time I met Don, I told him about the sea priestess training and he says, well, go ahead. And then, so I, I wrote a book about it and then two people stepped forward, at least two people. There were also many other people that started groups based on the sea priestess training. But there's one, once again, a person that's, uh, that teaches it in Spanish, another person teaches it in English. And uh, there's just several groups out there throughout the world that just uh, base, or at least base their teachings on uh, the book called, I call the Untraining of the Sea Priestess. And most, even though I'm not crazy about that title, uh, but the publishers at the time said that they liked that title. It was my first book, so I just said, okay. Uh, but essentially it really does, the title really does say what it's all about. That, that you think that you know something, but maybe your family, teachers, or leaders, or commercials, or movies, anything that are influencers, that just maybe uh, that uh, those things were not necessarily beneficial, and maybe even blocks for your life. Not that they're bad, but maybe it's not aligned, those principles, those core principles, maybe just might not be a good fit, fit for you. So let's explore about your core beliefs. And then if it means some untraining, well then, then okay. So that's the, the large gist of uh, being a sea priestess. And yes, it's about water and, and, uh, yeah. I actually, um, yeah. as you're talking about that, I, I have a, a really um, instant connection with, with what you're, you're saying. Uh, for one, I um, went to Hawaii for six weeks and, and stayed there um, when I was 32. And that uh, started my journey in, in traveling and also in exploring my own cultural background and my own traditions and where I came from. And you're absolutely right when you say that some of these things that we have um, subtly taken in over the years since the day we were born or even before we were born, yeah. that clings to us. And maybe it's not necessarily the best thing for us. And, you know, I can tell you coming from um, Texas originally, while there are some wonderful, beautiful things about Texas, there's also a lot of dark ugliness in Texas, as, as we've seen in, in the past couple of years, actually. And that that is something that um, I've had to work through and and um, discover myself as part of my shadow work. And uh, yeah, I, I really resonate with that, it, including even the, the talk about the connection with water because um, whenever I feel troubled or unsettled or uneasy, I want to go to a body of water and connect with it. And luckily I live in the Netherlands, so there's water everywhere here. Uh, and I have a beautiful canal um, right out by my flat that I can mm. go and walk down and connect with whenever I'm feeling upset. So I, I think I'm going to um, purchase your your Sea Priestesses book after this because I, I want to dive into that and explore that uh -huh. more. So thank you for telling me about it. Uh -huh. uh, but, but then when I went on and moved to the mainland, which was when I was 18, uh, meaning you, the US. So I, I moved to Hawaii, into Hawaii when it was not a, uh, the US, it was a territory. Then when I was there, turned into being fully USA. But anyway, 18, I went to uh, the mainland and then basically, you know, just, just grew up, uh, ended up being a associate pastor in a few churches, uh, just dedicated my life to helping others uh, that were unseen or just no one even knew that they were there. And most of my ministry, yes, I taught within the church. And yes, I did the admin, admin things that had to be done, which I didn't like one bit at times. 
But then, uh, you know, I would get in the car and travel down dirt roads trying to find someone. And it's pretty easy to find someone in need. Uh, it, it, well, it just is. And so there would be many, many ministries that was birthed just from that, where I had a, a reading uh, for adults that didn't know how to read a, a reading ministry, a prison ministry, going to detention centers, uh, and uh, try to do that every every weekend. Uh, just just lots of things. That, the bottom line, it was about not just helping others, but helping others come along with me because I needed help. <laughs> you know that that they would be, and then I would say, "Oh, you really like." that you like doing that kind of thing well why don't you take that over and then I could just be over here focusing on that then I'd find someone else oh you like that okay why don't you take it over so by the time it was all said and done through the years it really did build up and yet many people really didn't understand exactly what I was doing but then I just had to come to the conclusion, that's okay if everybody doesn't understand what I'm doing. If you really want to understand what I'm doing, jump in the car with me and you'll and we'll drive down that dirt road and you'll see what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, and then they would, and even then some people wouldn't, but that's fine. That's fine. Maybe that just wasn't uh, wasn't their cup of tea, that's all. Absolutely. And uh, I like that you bring up um, this talk about, you know, the, the way you perform service within your community and the way you give back um, for, for all the teachings that you have been given through life. And um, I think that's something very important for for uh, the list, uh, our listeners to and our, our, our viewers to to consider, um, especially if you're, you're, you know, maybe in need, like you talked about, if you were in need yourself of, of, of comfort or of connection and and you receive that by giving it to others. And if you're really, yeah, experiencing that lack of connection, a great way to go and find connection is go and give to others. Volunteer somewhere in, in, a, in an activity you enjoy. Um, if, in, in my own life, I, I teach English. And uh, one thing that I like to do is volunteer with refugees so that they can learn English, uh, mm -hmm. especially the, the Ukrainian refugees that are coming across the border um, from the war. That's uh, been something that has uh, really has stuck with me because I'm also an immigrant into this country, and if there's a way I can help uh, someone else who is escaping, you know, a very even a worse, much worse situation than I was coming from, then it just it it makes me feel so um, so connected uh, to the people around me. Yeah. Um, oh so God. thank you for bringing that up. Well, thank you for bringing that up. That's just so beautiful. Um, it is. Yeah. And eventually, I eventually I met Don. What happened was, I was that at that point in time uh, working in New York City, lived in uh, Hunterton uh, County in uh, New Jersey, and uh, this person was a, a, a her name was Christine, and she said, you know all the way you talk it sounds like you would really love witch school you need to check these people out so i went on the net found witch school joined then uh, started taking the classes and within a year i went to hoopston because at that time you had to take uh intensives also to become a third degree so I was I was excited about that. Oh, okay, but but I met them before then. I met them before I was third degree. Uh, but when I I met uh, both of them in Hoopston, meaning, meaning Lady Crystal, that uh, she was the first priestess at the time. Well, she's still in. I mean, I always feel that we're we're in partnership with each other. I I never like to think of her as retired because I love her so very much. I I don't mind sharing the first degree. Uh, title like you know, like really uh but anyway uh as soon as i met them uh i saw a a humility i saw uh a openness to want to help others uh, uh no ladders to climb or no fences 
to, to or no foxholes to try to figure out how to maneuver from this point to that point. Everything was open and lovely and let's talk about it. And just the whole atmosphere I thought was just amazing. And I didn't need to prove myself. I didn't need to try to, I didn't need to try, period. I just needed to just come in uh, being me. Uh, and uh, they apparently uh, weren't too scared about that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, because like, how do we really know how we're coming across anyway? But uh, it, that was uh, like, okay, this is absolutely a tradition for me. And uh, I've never turned away. I have loved every minute. Um, I have uh, met wonderful people and so many talented people doing so many different things and doing things in different approaches and different outlooks and uh, from uh, from er every aspect of life. And I think that's how it should be, that we all should be evolving in our own way, in our own time, and not trying to make sure that we are all, we're all in the same line. We'll make sure everybody's in the straight line. No, it has nothing, nothing to do with that at all. It's about uh, go ahead and everybody explore and then we'll come together and we'll share that kind of attitude. And I, I love that. I absolutely love it too. It was the same thing that I noticed when I first came into witch school and then the Corellian tradition uh, at, at 18 and 19 years old is when I oh. first discovered it. I'd been looking into Wicca for several years before that, but this was my first serious practice with it. And um, I, my, I think through my 20s, I was just a bit too shy and maybe like um, um, kind of uh, fangirling a little bit over, you know, all of the leadership in the tradition and all of their very cool uh, stoles with all the patches on them and how much I wanted to be like them when I grew up. And, uh, you know, in my 30s, I got a little bit more confident and I started talking to more of the, the established members within the tradition. And I, what I noticed was just how approachable everybody is in the leadership. It, these aren't some, you know, it's not like the the Pope who's like off in the distance and you, untouchable. And, you know, you and Don, Ed, everyone in the tradition is just so approachable and so down to earth. And um, that's not something that I've, I've seen often uh, in, in very large groups of, of, because normally once you get up that high, there's a lot of distance between the bottom and there, that that's what I love about the Corellian tradition. It's, it's very much horizontal instead of vertical. Yes. And how I like to see it, and that I like how you describe that though, is that uh, most organizations are vertical and that it's about ascension uh, for our leadership. Uh, at least for me, I guess I could only speak for me. For me that it's more of a circle and that everyone is in the center. And it's like, well, how can everyone be in the center? Well, why not? Well, why not why everybody, not everybody be in the center? And, and so if everyone's in the center, everyone is connected, even though if they move off to the sides, it's fine, but, but just uh, that, that there's, no, there's no high or low. There's no one beneath me that's even a horrible, concept for me uh and i i just believe that everyone is in the center and i am every and i am with them and i am everyone very similar to how i see it i feel like this is a family and um yeah. it's not so much that you know grandma and grandpa ruled family so much as um, we give respect and made sure that it's been preserved for future generations. Um, yes. and, and I like that concept that we're all in this together. We're a family. There's young ones. There's, there's more mature ones. And yeah. 
So my next Clucker's book, uh, uh, because it in of um, moving into other planes So can you talk a little bit more about what it means? Can you hear me, Lady Stephanie? Okay, all I just heard just a few minutes ago was, can you talk about, and then that's all I heard. I think we may be frozen up. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Now, now I can hear you. Well, now I can't hear you. Okay. Program since the that helps the helps us run better. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. All I heard you say was, "Can you talk about?" And then that's all I heard. Sorry about that. Can you talk about your World Walkers book and how people can become a Corellian World Walker? Uh, once you just go to the tradition and then just look under groups and then it'll say World Walker. Just just go in there and join the Facebook group. And then what, what it is is that you go in there and then in the file section, everything that's in this book is uh, in the files. And you could go at your own pace, uh, learning uh, the different skills that a wool walker focuses in on. I always suggest to try to master one before you move on to the other one. Or if you're just the kind of person that, okay, this isn't working, let me just go on over here and master this. And then I'll come back to that. Okay, okay. So it, it's, uh, it's something that you don't have to say, all right, I have to do one thing before I can do this, before I can do this. No, you, just so long as you have a, a good understanding of all the different skills that's involved with world walking, and then you decide which house you want to work within. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's say you want to work as, as a medium, uh, working with the transition, uh, working as a conscious incarnate, uh, and you know there there's so we'll go through all the different houses, but essentially there are several uh, houses to consider to to work in. And then once a month, uh, I do a meditation on Chatsy, and essentially everybody gets on Chatsy, and I type out the meditation, and then I do meditations in such a way that that they don't have to respond, but most of them do respond. So I give them a guided meditation and then I'll ask them, so what are, are you experiencing anything now? Are you receiving anything now? Uh, what what are, are you, would you like to channel something? Are you picking up? Like, I try to make it that I'm putting it on them to uh, experience different ways to meditate. And then they type out uh, what they want to say. And it's worked for many years, even though many people have said that maybe it should be done on, uh, I don't know, to, that everybody can, can see each other, but no one's complained, complained inside World Walkers. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it that way until I guess, I don't know if someone complains, uh, but it seems like it, it works fine for us. And plus it's a nice way that now we have a record of it. We have a record of what they say. And sometimes just as a gift to the tradition, I'll ask the world walkers. And usually there's not too many that shows up each time, just a few and that's fine. And then I'll ask, can I share this? And I'll put it like on Facebook or in the hub or someplace that, that then it's, others can uh, see what we do, but, yeah. but, it's, but it's basically a work. It's a lifelong work of working with different kinds of spirits. 
that sounds fascinating. And and I want to go back to uh, a couple of concepts uh, that you talked about when when you were discussing that. But I also want to mention that um, you know when you were talking about how no one's complained about it, the the phrase "if it ain't broke, don't fix it" comes to mind. So <laughs> yes. yeah, I think you have a the right philosophy on that for sure. Um, if if it needs fixing, someone will 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 let you know. Otherwise, it's working great. Um, so. When you when you talked a little bit about um, what world walkers do, um, the phrase "conscious incarnate" was was one that I found fascinating as I was working on on editing the book for you, and yes. and that's one that I really want to dive into a little bit more with you and, and explain uh, to the audience a little bit. So, okay. what is a conscious incarnate, and how do how do we identify ourselves or become one, or yeah, what's that process like? Oh, I. I feel that many of us have been put on this earth to tell everyone else what they already are. And they already are uh, conscious incarnates. It's just that they didn't know it. So now they have a piece of knowledge. And with that knowledge that I always say, now that you have this knowledge, now what are you going to do about it? And then that's the point where uh, you it's basically Oh, why is that we okay let's hope someone gets that uh what why is that important that you sorry about that no worries is uh, that alexa <laughs> no that's uh, our phone hoping that it'll stop oh okay. that with uh uh okay we we live many lives and when we're over on the other side of the veil, uh, as we uh, evolve, that part of, of the other side of the veil becomes shorter and shorter and shorter and to the point that when we go to the other side of the veil, we also can see into this reality, the physical reality, clearer. We're over there, we can see here clearer, I know, but then there's a point that we can jump back and forth, see, okay, well, we're here, we can see this clear. When we're here, we can see this clearer. So th that's one evolve as we evolve. But there's some of us that still feel that break in time. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as time. I, I know, I don't try to, <laughs> I'm not trying to. Uh, so, uh, when we are on the other side of the veil as a conscious incarnate, we help others. And a lot of times I have conversations with people that just before they die, I will meet them. And, and it's about meeting them just before they die, because if they transition and they're on the other side of the veil, Sometimes it's very hard for, for some people to remember what they're working on over here uh, or lots of things that, or they just forget they're too overwhelmed. And so a conscious incarnate basically uh, holds their hand and helps them to see what they're seeing and uh, the conscious incarnate becomes what is the most comforting, comforting thing or object or person, uh, but letting them know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm the conscious incarnate here, so, but yet I'm, I'm also this uh, queen of the Nile, because, or, or I'm a, a goddess, or in other words, uh, I'm a tree, the most comforting thing in the world, but I just want to let you know I am, I'm, but I'm here to help you remember what where you are and what you are and what you were working on in your past life and all these other strings of other lives that you've been working on and to help you and to ask do you want to stay uh, stay with that that and and you may say no not really I'm tired of that I, I really don't want to be at least not for now I just don't want to work on that I, my next life, I just want a break from that. And then we just start the discussion. But by that time, uh, 
ancestors, their ancestors, uh, just the, will show up. I don't know how they show up. I don't care how they show up. But they're just there knowing that, okay, they're going to be there. And I, as the more shows up, I pull away because in that discussion, they will continue this discussion with that new transitioned being. And it's basically, all right, so uh, what, what country do you want to be born in the next time? Uh, what oh, You don't want to go back to what you were before? Then what, 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 what would you like to do? Um, and uh, just the conversation. And I usually don't stay for all the details because I don't feel it's my responsibility to stay there because uh, this person is completely engulfed in pure love of the ancestors and the goddess of God. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm back on this physical plane. So that's really broken down into the essence of what it is. But essentially we are just here to help them move from here to there and hand them over to their ancestors. I find it um, such a, a fascinating concept um, because if you're able to connect with uh, that, that line of consciousness throughout those incarnations, then, then you're able to, to pick up threads of a, a journey that is um, greater than any one lifetime or any even any one human being um, to, to fully come into a, a realization of um, connection to oh. to the universe yeah if people had any idea how magnificent that how they were created and why they were created they they would just be blown away just blown away with the magnificence of how much love was poured into us and for eons eons and eons that you just weren't an afterthought that happened just one night no that you had been lovingly and painstakingly uh developed and evolved over i i don't even want to say how many how many years who knows eons or yeah, yeah, yeah. longer absolutely yeah. Yeah. um and the 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 idea of having uh, a group of, of world walkers to to help um, those uh, people who are, are realizing that this for the first time, maybe, and, and connecting to this uh, uh, concept for the first time. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like that there is a, a group out there uh, dedicated to to making sure that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so uh, switching to um, some of your other books that you have coming out, and and I know you told me a little bit about them, but just you know, in your own words, could you share with our audience what what you're working on and what's already released? Okay, let's see. So there was the uh, the, the discovery tarot path. Uh, that's just basically about uh, a approach on looking at the tarot using uh, sets uh, uh, that relate to each other and can you can read the cards just using that one set. So I have it all broken down related to each set, what each set has inside of it, how it can be utilized. So that that's a real, we already talked about the sea priestess and then there's the the little, uh, the little, uh, book I wrote was called The Teacup. And that was just a, 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 a book that I just wanted to write about my, uh, my grandmother. You know, she came from Scotland, uh, was an immigrant to Canada, then from Canada to the US. And then that's uh, so like, we're not that like, like some people are like, oh, I lived in the US for you know, since the 1600s, why well, I can't say that. It was my grandmother that went to Canada. What, what am I going to say? Yeah. So, which is fine. Uh, but anyway, uh, she taught me uh, about uh, how to uh, divine through tea leaf reading. 
And then I came up with about six other ways to read the tea leaves much easier because many times when you just look at the, at the tea leaves, it's just a speck on the cup. And then you have this long line of interpretations. Okay, well, the horse means, I'm going like, it's a speck. I can't, I can't see a horse there or it's a cloud. No, it's not a cloud, it's a speck, you know, that kind of thing. So I came up with a way to make it real clear that you take a big chunk of loose tea and uh, of course, like flip it down on the on the saucer so that you have you don't have any specs. Wait, you kind of do have a few specs, but you have big chunks that now you can really look at it and make you know, like looking at clouds. At least you have some form there that you can divine something. So yeah, that that does look like a horse's head. Okay, I'll take it. Fine. Uh, so it's just broken down into the meanings of what that particular thing means. And, uh, you know, I talk a little bit about high T and low T and, uh, but just basically dedicated it to my, my, uh, my grandmother. So. Absolutely. I, I find, um, I, so I'm a little, I'm relatively late to the idea of uh, uh, interpreting leaves and, and div divination from tea, tea leaves, mostly because, you know, growing up in Texas, we had uh, Southern sweet tea and not, not, you know, uh, European style tea. Uh, yes. But since I've moved to Europe, I've, I've gained a new fascination for it because uh, here, we have, you know, the, the proper tea with the teacups and we can flip it over and things like that. So it's, yes. yeah, I I've, uh, find that uh, much more uh, interesting now that it's uh, a regular part mm -hmm. of my life. Um, well, good. Yeah. But then the, the, the other books that I'm working on now uh, is uh, I'm calling it tarot therapy yes. only because uh, we're really... In the 1800s, there were many pro profound and influencers related to tarot reading. And there were several that said that the tarot is, is about learning about himself and it's not about divination. Not I, dis I disagree with that because tarot has been used for too long now to show that it does work and can be used in divination. But at the same token, those people from that age saying, oh, but it's about learning about yourself and moving through things and helping yourself move through the stages of your life. Then like, well, well, okay, approaching it that way, let's start looking at these cards again. So I did much studying uh, related to people that uh, would write about tarot, uh, in you know 16, uh, 1600s, 1700s, uh, uh, 1500, a little bit of 15. Like I would try to read everything and try to compile that and put this together in such a way, hoping that deity was at my back and the ancestors were at my back, uh, helping me uh, move through this this process. Um, I even have a psychologist friend that she said that when you're done, let me look at it. And if you're just like, just off track, like nobody's business, I'll let you know. She says, but, but I, what I heard so far, I, I think you're on the right track. That's cool. You know, so I feel like I, if I've gotten the blessing, like, cause I'm not a psychologist. I was a spiritual counselor for like 30 years, uh, uh, and I still consider myself a spiritual counselor, uh, but yet uh, I'm not a psychologist. I was not formally trained as a uh, uh, as a as a psychologist. So, so, but it's just what I have, what other people have said that that particular thing uh, is, and and it's a lot about just awareness of what that card is really uh, really about. And just by seeing it, there's many times when you look at a card, you think you're seeing everything in it. And then finally you realize, oh, well, no, I never saw that before. And then that can be a, uh, 
a, uh, a shift at that moment, like, okay, now, now I understand that, that card, but maybe that card can't be understood until you go through that stage in your life. And now, now you look back at that card, like, oh, so that's what I was going through. Now, now I understand what that's about. So it's that kind of thing as that, even though I'm not a psychologist, but yet I have lived a long life and have experienced, luckily, to experience lots of wonderful things in my life. And, uh, and I can only apply, and that's how I usually teach anyway, I can only tell you what I know and then let you know there's lots of other amazing people out there that experience life in that way. Well, now you need to go with them and find out how they approached that same thing. So I'm not trying to say I'm the be all because no way and I would, would want to be. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be called tarot therapy. And then another book that's going to be called, uh, um, uh, let's see, who are you? Oh, I like that name. What is this one about? <laughs> uh, it's going to be a, uh, uh, I guess a statement, uh, even though there's been several people that have said throughout the years, would you just do like memes or something? Put something out there once a day because the things uh, really are uh, like many of them. Well, well, I mean, just nice compliments. Like, it doesn't matter what they say. But so, but I, and at that point, I realized uh, as I would say these different things, I would just write them down. Well, now I have like 60 pages of these things. I like, well, I have 60 pages of these. And I don't like to call them memes because they're just things that I, I just say, and then people go like, what are you talking about? Or, oh, okay, well that, I, I, I never saw myself in that way and maybe I don't want to. Or I, so I do say things like that. I'm not trying to cause trouble or anything, just try to say these things, but yet sometimes they, uh, they people say they somewhat help. I, uh, but anyway, I've saved them. And I just think it's, uh, I think a good idea to just let people say, all right, now this is going to be, a, I want it to be 365 uh, day. I mean, I'm even thinking of, uh, 366 days, I don't know if it's a leap year, and just have it where a person can read one thing and just have that settled in their mind one a day and uh, just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a huge experiment to see what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm curious about that one to see how it goes, uh, especially uh, this idea of like a, a little saying or a little thought to think about each day. That's, that's exactly what it is, a little thought to think about. That's a perfect way of saying it. Absolutely. And I, I, as you were talking about your um, tarot therapy book, uh, that's the one I'm, I'm very excited to, to um, start digging into again once you're, you're ready for our next step with that. Um, mostly because I, I've, uh, I've done an, uh, another tarot book before this, but it, it, it was geared towards children and it was um, teaching them the lessons that could be learned from the tarot. And, and we would make it very simple, short, uh, uh, little like um, Aesop's fables types of morals, oh, of moral nice. of the story. Yeah. So it would be, you know, for the, the fool, we would have look before you uh, leap, right? You know, oh. just be, be a little bit more cautious instead of, you know, wandering around aimlessly uh, because you might stumble and fall if you don't. And with the magician, it was, you know, open yourself up to knowledge. Um, and then we had one for, for each, each part of the uh, tarot deck of the major arcana, um, but looking at it from more, more of an adult perspective and uh, over the course of a lifetime um, sounds much more in depth. And um, it really sparked my curiosity. I, and I know I, I read through parts of the, the rough draft while we were working on it as well. So I'm excited to dig back into it and see what you've added to it since then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so just we have a couple of minutes left and I want to okay. follow up with two final questions. Uh, we have a lot of pagan listeners who are out there thinking about their own book ideas and, and aren't really sure where to get started. What advice would you give to um, new pagan authors or, or people who want to try their hand at writing books as, as someone who has already published uh, both with publishing companies and independently her own books quite successfully? Boy. Well, first of all, they need to contact you. And, uh, you know, I, I think they just, they just need to start by writing what they have experienced themselves. Write what you know, and then you won't get lost. Uh, and, uh, and then set up in your own way some kind of a a system dealing with time. Let's say, okay, I am not the type that can say, I will work on this book uh, one hour a day. Okay, admit that to yourself out front, say it, and then say, okay, what are you willing? Uh, two, oh, two hours once a month? That sounds okay. That's going to take a really long time to finish, but at least, if it, at least you're going to do something. So something that that you set up your timeline that you know you will feel comfortable with. And, and then it even uh, it would just get into the habit that whenever you have a thought, uh, you know, you have your, your cell phone or you know, if you're at your computer or how, however you, you, or a piece of paper and a pen that, that you just need to jot something down, jot it down, but make sure that if you're right, if you, uh, or reading something and you write it down. Make sure you write down who, who's that. Those because aren't those aren't your words. There's nothing more terrible than ten years later you find this uh, this really cool saying and you go, I don't know who said this. I I don't I I don't think I said it. Okay, now you can't use it because. You didn't say it, or you're pretty sure you didn't say it. It's better to go in that direction instead of oh yeah, I probably said it. No, because then that's called plagiarism. So just but just getting in the habit that whenever, especially when you're working on a book, that that you're just always having, you're always looking at things through the eyes of that book, and having some kind of a recording device that you're that you come up with these ideas and and just just uh, just uh, you know, jot them down. And, and, and that's a, a good beginning. And, uh, and I would suggest to, in fact, work with someone like you and that you would, uh, uh, you, know, you would guide them along. Now, my first two books, I, I, you know, I, I didn't need guidance because uh, I basically already had the manuscript done and I just was sending it to different publishers. And uh, so when, when they said yes to me, then they just went in there and uh, just, you know, just changed, you know, like, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that, that uh, chapter over here and I'm going to format it that way. They, they did all this magic and then they gave it to me and then I would go, okay, <laughs> all right. So they, uh, I guess I, I knew enough to know how to present it, but obviously I did not know enough to know how, oh, the fifth chapter should have been in the second chapter. Uh, they were professionals about that. And so they would, they did all the maneuvering around and, and it all, yeah, worked out just fine. So, so in other words, rely on experts and don't think that, that you are an expert in everything because most people aren't and that's fine there's nothing wrong with it. there's nothing wrong with it. it but you're the one as the writer you're the one that gets to write the cool stuff you're the one that gets to be um uh, the one that might possibly uh help another person's life that's cool enough and let the experts do what they do best Absolutely. The advice you're sharing is a lot of the same, the same advice that we have in the, uh, the speak your own book textbook, oh. uh, through the witch school course that we offer. And, okay. uh, that that's very similar advice. We'd say, you know, write about what you know, 
yourself is a great place to start. The, the skills that you have, are in, that's another great place to start. Um, and then when you get stuck on something, that is the second thing we recommend is do come to us because we offer some free help for, for people just getting started in this. We do offer that free consultation. So they can come in and sit down with, with someone who has a, a, some expertise on this and, and can give them some ideas and some uh, suggestions for how to move forward. So yeah, I appreciate you. I don't wanna sound biased by saying, you know, come, come to my company <laughs> no. because, but yeah, I, but I do uh, strongly believe that we are here to help pagans um, share their voices with the world. And whether that means, you know, you're just using some free advice from us or, you know, our full suite of services, uh, whatever it is, as long as you get your voice out there and, and share it, that's really what's important. I, I talk about important. Pagans do not, well, some pagans do not realize that the things that we know, that they know, is important for others to hear. Absolutely. And so that that could be real game changers within the population of the world. So you do have something that is needed by the world. Yeah, absolutely. And then that's what I try to, to tell everyone that I run, to, especially if you have any survival skills or sustainability skills or information on how to get through climate change. That's a huge thing right now. For, and pagans are especially interested in that type of uh, information anyway, just just naturally with our love for Mother Earth. And so, you know, those those kinds of skills, I know a lot of pagans out there have them. And a lot of people in the world need to know this, whether they're pagan or not. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Very and good. My final question for you is just how can people find your books? How can people find you online? How can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can find me at uh, stephanieleonneal.com. You can find me on krillian.com. It would be the easier. Well, I guess both are easy. Uh, you can find my books on Amazon. Uh, some libraries do carry uh, some of my books, but I guess that's beside the point. Uh, but just, uh, you know, it's Amazon's, it's, Amazon's easy. It's there, okay. they're there, yeah. yeah. So everybody, please check out um, Lady Reverend Stephanie's uh, works. Um, I've read through a lot of them personally and I, I find them, very useful information uh for Thanks. informing my own life uh especially thank you yeah thank you. so um and i want to appreciate i want to thank everyone for listening in today and following along with us and exploring these topics with uh reverend stephanie neal and thank you so much for watching speak your own book tv show we will see you next time bye everybody Thank you for watching Speak Your Own Book the TV Show on Pagan World TV, hosted by head writing coach and co-founder Chris Copeland. Please join us next time on Speak Your Own Book. Sarah had been trying to write a book for ages, but she was still mm -hmm. on page one. Until she hmm. discovered SpeakYourOwnBook.com. Sarah teamed up with one of our trained writing coaches who listened to Sarah's book idea, asked the right questions, and guided Sarah every step of the way. In 90 minutes, they had written the outline for Sarah's entire book. Within weeks, using the speak writing method, Sarah became a published author, both online and in print. Whether it's a textbook, an autobiography, a novel, or a children's book, speakyourownbook.com can help. Yeah. Visit our website today to download our free 50 question guide and schedule your free consultation. With Speak Writing, anyone can publish a book. Speak your own book today. You speak, we write.